Mm. Cooks, everybody hear me okay? Yes. Alrighty. Seems like voice got a lot better when the voice viewer came out, and lately we've been having more problems, so I don't know what's up with that, but I guess we'll have to just uh, plug on through as best we can. I like the purple pet dragon thingy over there. Very cool. Uh, let's see. So we haven't had a meeting for a few weeks, um, but well, there's been quite a bit going on. I think most of it hasn't related to feature stuff, so I'm not sure we've got a ton of... Uh, new updates um let's see eep is well firstly just just viewers we've had the voice viewer go out and we've had the um more recently the shutdown singletons viewer go out um and uh, of course those are both viewers that are mostly about kind of behind the scenes stuff um i think the voice viewer helped with voice and the shutdown singletons seems to help with uh, crash rate on shutdown. Um, hopefully those are all good things, but that also means that uh, a bunch of stuff has to be merged into the other viewers under development. And in particular, uh, with EEP, the, the last batch of changes has uh, broken some stuff in EEP, so I know they're working on getting that stuff sorted out. Uh, Euclid said he was going to focus on that and not, uh, not swing by the meeting today. Um, Let's see, other stuff. Uh, Ptolemy, do you want to say anything else about doings with uh, EEP or graphics in general? Uh, just that we're working on it. <laughs> Trying to get EEP uh, wrapped up as soon as possible. Yep, the, the top priority is uh, still getting the remaining EEP bugs sorted out, so we'll uh, keep plugging on that. Uh, Ryder, anything new on your end? No, nothing new. Uh, nothing new on my end. Um, doing a little bit. Of, uh, I am doing a little bit of viewer work, um, and and running into uh, running into merge problems as well. But uh, uh, for uh, texture download, but but nothing uh, nothing that's even close. Yeah, I don't, don't want to give away any secrets, but I think uh, I think we'll be seeing some nice changes for texture downloads in the future. It's super secret. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah, forget you even heard it. What? So I guess we're mostly open for questions. I did want to toss out one kind of general topic for conversation. We've been having some discussions internally about this. Um, I mean, as you guys know, the, the avatar system has gotten substantially more complicated over time. Um, you know, it's it, you can do more with it, but it's not it's not uh, as 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 uh, straightforward to use as it used to be, uh, especially since the the days when uh, mesh became standard. That's introduced a lot of complexity, and then uh, bakes on mesh. I don't know if that's made things simpler or not, it's certainly a substantial change from what people are are used to in some cases. So I just wanted to toss out the general question of, uh, you know, complexity of avatar management and, and say, you know, are there things that we could be doing, uh, you know, kind of on the, the Linden end of things um, to help with that. I, I know a lot of this depends on kind of a, an ecosystem that's been built up by the by you know mesh content creators. It's not it's not all stuff that's coming directly from us, but uh, there still might be things that we do to uh, to make things better. So um, uh, just just wanted to raise that if people have any thoughts. Um, but uh, other than that, we we chat about any other questions people have. Uh, is the work on Bakes on Mesh finished? Uh, we have a set of, of things that we would like to do in a uh, in a follow-up uh, project, but the you know the the current behavior of Bakes on Mesh is 
uh, you know, what, what it's going to be for at least a while. We don't have any uh, immediate plans to get back to that. Yeah, well, I don't know if we waited too long to do bakes on mesh, but I, uh, actions that involve changing something in the past aren't really on the table right now, unfortunately. Left arm and left leg needs an onion layer. Uh, can you amplify on that? Why, why does it need a, an onion layer as opposed to just a different, uh, you know, region on the mesh, different face? Okay, you think it's covered on the Big Sun Mesh forum? I think the Jira that uh, Ryder linked to is uh, about building a time machine, but I'm not sure if it's publicly visible. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, what if you just have a non-onion avatar where the left arm is its own uh, is its own face on the on the mesh? I mean, can't you just put a different texture on it then? It sounds like this is a problem caused by the onion avatars rather than a problem that makes you need onion avatars. But you need access to the skin textures. Okay. Yeah, that is a limitation. We uh, we don't currently um, uh, apply the skin stuff, so somebody would basically have to reproduce that in a universal, which doesn't give you the flexibility of the existing skin stuff. Yeah, I don't know how we'd fix that. We could, you know, if we did another uh, Big Sun Mesh project, we could try to add that behavior. Um, I'm not sure if that would break things for a significant number of people who are trying to use the left arm other ways. Convert existing skins to universals. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting point. I mean, you could basically just 
take the existing upper body texture and plug it in as the as the left arm texture too, I think. That wouldn't break anything since you wouldn't have to use it if you didn't want to. the left arm wouldn't have any default behavior if you didn't have any um, if you didn't have any wearables that actually used the left arm channel Oh, so getting back to the, uh, I'm not trying to avoid discussion of this topic, but um, also on the subject of um, just trying to improve avatar behavior and, and configurability, uh, one one thing that's come up in, in some discussions is uh, handling of HUDs, that you know you tend to have fairly complex HUDs with your mesh avatars, and they're not particularly easy to manage, you know, they take up a lot of screen real estate, and you have to use the build tools to reposition them and so on. Um, how much of a pain point is that for people? If we, had, if we had better ways to manage HUDs, would that be a significant win? Like, for example, what if you could have, a, and I, I really don't know how hard this would be, but what if you could have a HUD living in a separate floater so that you could, um, you know, you could move it by just dragging the floater around and you could, uh, you know, minimize it and so forth. Uh, sorry, Kara, what do you mean by the blue menu? Oh, LSL dialogs. Yeah, um, I mean, we do have a pretty limited set of functionality in the uh, available through LSL dialogs. I could see that having having more there might help. If people do really complex stuff with HUDs, though, I mean, if we to try to make a um, you know an equivalent functionality through LSL, I think would be uh, would be probably a big project. Uh, what do you mean about uh, about favorites? Meaning you don't have to wear the hoods all the time.
Okay, so the favorites is is like um, it's just for inventory management, and it it gives you some subset of inventory that you can to easily interact with. Okay. So I have talked about having favorites in the uh, in the viewer menu, uh, uh, you know, for for our viewer as well, but uh, currently don't. Okay, Beck, thanks for the example. Let's see what you mean. Yeah, the ALL dialogue is pretty limited. It would be uh, an interesting question. You know, what a sort of intermediate complexity thing between LL dialogue and a and a full fledged HUD would look like, and if if um, you know that's something that would be worth trying to address. Yeah, trying to go some kind of HTML route might be uh, might be an interesting option since we do already have the the media on a prim stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I'd characterize our GUI as perfectly good. It's all certainly extremely complex to modify. <laughs> I don't know if we don't want to try to make people deal with the ZUI stuff.
HUDs have, uh, HUDs aren't a focus in the sense that we're currently working on them. They're just something that's come up in discussions recently. We've had some people internally pointing out that um, managing HUDs can be a source of complexity for uh, for avatars. So I just wanted to toss it out there and see what uh, you guys thought about it. Yeah, I noticed back how long your uh, HUD took to load when you showed me that example. I'm thinking there must be a lot of textures. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I spotted the problem right there. Question about Arctan. Uh, yeah, I don't really have anything new on Arctan. Um, the I've gotten pulled into a couple of other things recently, but um, you know, basically, I'm I'm still trying to get things hooked up so that we can do data collection in different environments with uh, different hardware, and then kind of crunch through the numbers from that. The, the last thing I was working on was with uh, texture loading um, or, or, you know, monitoring the, the number and complexity of the textures as, as part of the stats we're collecting. It's actually, I think, a little hard to uh, quantify how textures apply for accounting purposes. It, you don't get the same kind of straightforward slowdown with textures that you do with triangles. I mean, basically, you add more triangles to an object, it takes longer to draw. Um, but, uh, you know, with the textures, you know, you can have quite a lot of textures, and it doesn't necessarily slow you down too much unless the, um, you know, except while they're loading, and, or if you start hitting against memory limits, and then it slows things down a lot. So, it, it, it doesn't have this kind of gradual degradation that makes it easy to, to do calculations on. So um, that's that's a extra kind of fun factor in trying to come up with reasonable numbers. But uh, anyway, we'll have to find something reasonable there. Higher memory limits for VRAM, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that that is in our planned or current work somewhere, but I don't have the details on it. And yeah, Muscadine certainly has stuff to work on. I've um, right now it's uh, it's kind of the third step down the stack. I've gotten pulled into some non-feature stuff, and then um, you know when I get back to Arctan, that's that's the next level. And when I get Arctan in decent state, then I can think about the Muscadine issues. Is a Sansar solution that sounds plausible? Um, what was the uh, sorry? What was the uh, solution to what in in Sansar? Oh, it's automatically trying to sort of throttle down the texture. 
density based on load. That's interesting. Uh, there's a question about pulling muscadine into Firestorm. I, I wouldn't advise Firestorm to do anything with muscadine right now. Um, you know, the work is in an early stage and it's uh, just a project viewer and it requires special regions to even work. So, um, you know, there, there wouldn't be much benefit to fooling with it at this point. Um, you know, it could, could and probably will change substantially before it gets released. Anyway, and uh, if you grabbed it now, you can Yeah, right. Also, we uh, we ask people to not actually incorporate stuff until it gets to RC. Lucy, what would be... Uh... Yeah, I don't know, user-friendly. I don't think anything that requires writing an LSL script is really user-friendly. Um, say casual scripter-friendly, what would be what would be friendlier, like being able to apply a complete shape, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, but shape, shape uh, certainly makes a lot of sense, yeah. Right, the uh, kind of parameter by parameter thing was just implemented first because that's kind of the smallest building block that you can use for other stuff, but um, it's certainly not a good endpoint for, for uh, ease of use. Yeah, modular shapes are, uh, are a tougher question. You know, we don't really have a design for that currently, you know, let alone having it actually working. Um, but I know it is a, it is kind of a pain having like all the params, well, not all the params, the vast majority of the params shoved into this one shape wearable. And then, uh, you know, you kind of either get all of them or none of them. What would a modular system look like? You're trying to support, uh, you know, basically an arbitrary subset of sliders in each module, and then have to do something about it if they're fighting over the same parameter. Or are you thinking that, you know, we kind of decide where to draw the line, and then there's a sort of support for a head subshape and a, I don't know, a torso subshape and so forth, and then they those each kind of have uh, a distinct uh, 
set of parameters with no overlap. Yeah, the uh, kind of subshapes are uh, are an interesting topic. Uh, there's a question about exporting, importing categories. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean. Are you, you mean categories in the inventory sense, or or particular like categories of parameters or shape categories? Uh huh. Uh, Lucy had a question about object body shape so it can return what the value is for the male param. I thought there was a way to query the the male female slider value currently. Um, you know, just using the the get set param value. So I don't remember exactly which param it is now. Eighty maybe. No object details. I just meant the um, the slider values, the uh, you know L get object params or whatever it is. Okay, yeah, we do have that uh, improved shape export uh, pulled into the future avatar improvements uh, bucket. Am I right that 90% that, uh, of the concern here is being able to manipulate heads and bodies separately or does it kind of go finer grain than that? Okay, so Lucy, you're saying that L get object details can get the gender, but that only works with the um, for a script that's running inside that object, and you want something that uh, an, an external item like a chair can can query, right? If there's not already Jira for that, that would be a good thing to uh, submit as a feature request.
Yeah, it's it's actually stored as a floating point number just because all the sliders are. Although we don't um, we don't currently have anything that really uses it in a you know non-binary way. It's all uh, it's all just used to generate a you know zero or one classifier. But it it is a uh, uh, an interesting fact that uh, might be useful if we were trying to make things more flexible. I'm not sure the best way to break up shapes. Uh, if you you know, we'd either have to support multiple shapes or we would have to add some sort of new wearable type, you know, like a like a partial shape or something. Um, and then if you're wearing uh, one of those, maybe that replaces the corresponding sliders from your your sort of whole body shape or something like that. Sort of an interesting question. The best way to do that. Mask list, yeah, I don't know. That seems like kind of the techie solution, but I'm not sure that that's that gives a very comprehensible behavior for end users. Um, there's certainly some UI challenges to make it clear what's going on. Um, you know, you're trying to edit your appearance, and you've got you know three different shapes that have different mask settings, and they're sort of fighting with each other about some of the sliders and. I, I don't know how you present that in a way that makes it clear, you know, why you look the way you look. Yeah, I think the advantage of having a kind of an explicit set of of you know subshape types, you know, you've got a head subshape, you know which sliders it includes. You've got a you know, I don't know, body subshape or just a just a torso one or whatever, but it's you know, you've got some particular each slider sort of only belongs to one of those, you know, kind of modules and then it's I think it's easier to explain what's going on there. Probably easier to because I mean, uh, you know, you think about sort of content creators versus end users, but I mean, if, if these things are modified, then anybody is potentially a, a content creator if they go in to edit and start fiddling with stuff, you know, you've, you start changing your slider, which, which shape are you changing now that there's multiple shapes? It's, it's not, uh, it's not nearly as obvious what's going on as it is when, uh, you know, each thing kind of only lives one place. Uh, 
So uh, we talked about EAP a little bit earlier. Uh, right now they're dealing with a merge issue from the last um, viewer update, and the top priority after that is uh, just working on the, the remaining bugs. So, Polly, so are you thinking that the mask is a is a part of a shape, or is it a separate object that is sort of associated with a shape somehow? Is it a new asset type, or is it just a set of fields in in the current shape wearable? Separate item from the end user. Hmm. I don't know how I put an item in another item. They're not the the current system kind of assumes that these things are all just sort of existing as as peers inside the outfit. They don't they don't really uh, have any kind of a hierarchy to them. So I mean, it, it does seem like a kind of a question if you've got a bunch of. Um, you got a bunch of shapes and a bunch of masks, you know, how, how does the relationship between them get created and, uh, and visualized? Uh, I'm wondering if it'd be more convenient. I mean, if it's just a question of sort of identifying which subset of sliders is relevant for, you know, hands versus um, versus heads or whatever, then uh, you know, so you kind of only need to make that decision once, and then you could just have some sort of discrete set of categories where you say, okay, this this shape affects the head or whatever. Um, I'm wondering how much of a problem it's going to be having. Uh, Having some sliders that have kind of a global effect, though, um, you know, like the like the height slider doesn't that scale a bunch of bones, maybe including the head bone. Um, I'm not sure if the slider model itself is lends itself to uh, kind of you know chopping things up at the seams quite as much as uh, as we'd like.
Yeah, I mean, I think extreme shapes could be a problem, but I was just thinking about the, the issue of kind of boundaries, too. Um, you know, you've got uh, you, you've got a, a slider that affects a bone that that uh, you know is is often weighted to portions of you know both the head and the neck, right? And so the that slider has to live somewhere. But then whatever you do with it, it's going to affect the it's going to affect the body, you know, kind of outside of its immediate region. I guess that's really just kind of a known limitation. You you still wind up with some consistent set of slider values, however uh, however the shapes you know combine to do that. Okay, so the majority case is just to kind of break up the sliders along the boundaries that correspond to kind of what gets packaged as a separate mesh head versus what gets packaged as a separate mesh body, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, maybe. I'm not against, you know, generalizing things in principle, but if it if it makes it harder to present it in an understandable way, then there's a there's going to be a trade-off there. For example, uh, you know, a sort of a easy to understand, but not uh, but not easy to generalize solution would just be to add two new uh, wearable types called, you know, head shape and body shape um, that, you know, each are associated with their kind of respective subset of parameters. Um, you know, that, that's pretty easy to understand for an end user, but it doesn't give you any hooks for making something that, you know, just controls hands or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I'm worried about the mask thing. I, I, you know, I get the idea that you want to be able to deal with sort of arbitrary subsets, and that that gives you a way to do it. But um, I, I think it introduces a lot of uh, a lot of complexity to to get there.
And I mean, if, if we do still have the, uh, you know, the commands for modifying individual slider values and, and, you know, say we extended that to avatars as well, then that would, that would give you a hook for sort of tweaking things as well. Well, if I can do it in my sleep, then I guess it could turn up any time. It's hard to predict. I might not even know I've done it. Yeah, well, Lucy, I'll tell you what, if the next time I, uh, I'm in that code at all, I'll try to do that. It is a small change, but it's just not something I've been working on at all recently. Uh, question about bug two two seven eight seven zero. I mean, it looks like we've already imported it, but it's just flagged as uh, release. It looks like it repros outside of uh, outside of EEP. So I assume it's uh, it's something else. All right, well, we're about at time, so we should probably uh, wrap it up for this week. Um, check the schedule here. I think we should be around next week. Yeah, so we've got a meeting next week, and then uh, following week is Thanksgiving in the U.S., so everything will be closed down for the holiday. Um, and the following one will be doing no meeting because it's the uh, uh, we've got an internal company meeting. So I think so. Yeah, we'll meet next week, and then the next one after that will be the December twelfth. Um, I should probably update the website for that. Yeah, I, I, uh, regarding the more frequent changes, I'm sure there's a rate of change that would that would cause noticeable lag with a large group of objects, but um, I'm, I'm sure we could, you know, allow a higher rate than we have right now. How often are you trying to update these things, Lucy? What what's a rate that would, you know, make you uh, more concerned about other features than this feature? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you've you've uh, you've been concerned about this about this uh, rate throttle for a while. I was just wondering what what level of rate throttle would cause you to not be worried about the rate throttle. I don't think it's one change every 10 seconds. I think it's two or three changes every 10 seconds, but yeah, there is a, there is some kind of a uh, rate set like that. Yeah.
Well, okay, imagine that I'm in the code and I'm getting ready to change the number to something else. What number are you hoping I'm going to change it to? Okay, well, we'll see. It's, you know, it's, at this point, it's all, uh, it's all test code anyway. You know, if, even if I make it faster, it's possible we decide that that's causing a performance hit and we have to step it back. But, you know, for purposes of, of um, evaluation, I'm, I'm happy to have people trying it out at uh, faster speeds. Okay, well, we should wrap it up for this week. Um, and uh, so we'll, uh, we'll see everybody uh, next week then. Thanks for coming. Awesome. Thanks, Fear. Thanks, Lindens. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye, Kathy. Thanks, all.